for a lot of men, super physiologic levels of testosterone, meaning super physiologic in the blood, are often necessary in order to get a adequate clinical response. And it has a lot to do, in my opinion, with genetic variations of the androgen receptor, mm -hmm. interference with the androgen receptor from, you know, a number of different endocrine disrupting compounds of which there are thousands of them. Sometimes you need to push that dose for certain men to get a mm -hmm. clinical effect, whereas with other men, you don't. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to circle back to one of your deep dives, which you did oh, yeah. not long ago about the androgen receptor. Because mm. I found it very, very interesting. <laughs> oh, right? You put everything together. Mm -hmm. um, and I've never yeah. seen somebody actually dive into the androgen receptor that in depth, uh, besides maybe me, about mm -hmm. how steroids work. Uh, but it was a longer video. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you did like a 35 minute video about the androgen receptor, mm -hmm. about GAC repeaters and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. Do you think you can narrow it down a little bit, like the key points for this podcast? Sure. Yeah. Well, so it does okay. really have clinical relevance, in my opinion. It and and mm -hmm. and it it explains a lot why some men respond one way to androgens mm -hmm. and other men respond differently. Same androgen, same dose, same body weight, right. that sort of thing. Um, the the affinity of the androgen receptor is genetically mediated. We are, you know, we've a lot of people have talked about this, these CAG repeats, polyglutamates, but there's also like these polyproline. Uh, repeats, mm -hmm. all of these things interact to to determine how well that androgen receptor functions. And if you right. think about it, it's the binding of testosterone to the androgen receptors. It's like that's just the first step in this yeah. big long process, right? That's out you of the side of one. You have you have two that attach, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. It's a dimer, right? So there's mm -hmm. there's a there's a binding site that makes that happen with a conformational change, and then now we have to get it into the nucleus. So there's transport proteins involved in that and channel pores mm -hmm. and things. And then now we also have to bind it to the DNA and then, you know, unravel these histones. It's incredibly complicated. So yeah. you can imagine like every step of that process is is going to be is determined ultimately by some genetic factors and environmental ones, of course, too. When yeah, some nutrient that. intake. Like I think that zinc and yeah. selenium, all, zinc and selenium also mm -hmm. contribute in this process. Absolutely. So this and, is, yeah. Yeah, and not to mention uh, endocrine disrupting compounds and chemicals that are everywhere yeah. that now are yeah. interfering with the binding of the uh, yeah. interfering with the function of the androgen receptor. So this is why um, you know there's some physicians out there, and I think uh, I've heard Keith Nichols say this on some podcasts. Mm -hmm. He's a, a well known guy, I think, in in the in the world of of testosterone replacement therapy. And he says for a lot of men, super physiologic levels of testosterone, meaning super physiologic in the blood are often necessary in order to get a adequate clinical response. And it again, it has a lot to do, in my opinion, with genetic variations of the androgen receptor, mm -hmm. interference with the androgen receptor from you know a number of different endocrine disrupting compounds, of which there are thousands of them. So, you know, he states the he states his case pretty well, and I actually agree with him that, you know, that sometimes you need to push that dose for certain men to get a mm -hmm. clinical effect, whereas with other men, you don't. I mean, I, I, right. I have guys and I've seen guys who who feel really good with total testosterones of 600 and, yeah, you know, me free too. testosterone. I know I'm several like, of them. They're freaks, yeah. though. They're, they're they big freaks. bodybuilding freaks. Yeah. And their blood work yeah. looks perfect. And you look at their testosterone, testosterone 600. 600. You would think it's 2,000, 2000. based on their muscularity. Yeah. Precisely. Precisely. Yeah. So it just, should, reality, just goes to show you, right? Like... This is individualized medicine. All, you know, all medicine really should be individualized. But in this particular, um, in this particular field, like you can't. So, and that's a good way to sort of identify somebody in the medical world who doesn't really understand testosterone. Who says we need to get your level to X, uh, mm -hmm. because that's that is that may not be the case. You know, in my opinion, we need to get your levels to whatever it takes to resolve your symptoms. And exactly. for you, that might yeah. be one number. For me, that's a different number. And a big part of that, certainly not the only part, but a huge part of that is going to be, you know, genetic variation and the way that the androgen receptor functions. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that boils it down a little bit. Uh, it's super fascinating. <laughs> and I know that we're going to be learning a lot more about that in the next few years. But, um, yeah, it, it, and that's why this cookie cutter approach that you see 
or um, you know, the endocrine and urological societies say that you should be shooting for, I think they use the phrase like mid normal testosterone levels is like your target. Well, that might be okay for a percentage of men, a small percentage, honestly, but it's mm-hmm. not going to, you're not going to be able to address the needs of most men by doing that so approach. I, it, I can take myself as an example, right? Yeah. My, my testosterone mm-hmm. levels are mid normal or mid high mm-hmm. normal, six and mm-hmm. 700. Mm-hmm. And maybe it's because I took steroids for 12 years in total. Uh, mm-hmm. So I know what's, you know, behind door, door number two, mm-hmm. or maybe it's because my muscularity and the physical demand that I put on my body is so much higher compared to where it was before, because I still train like an animal. Mm-hmm. I do my daily facet cardio, right? I walk a lot. Yeah. I, I do all kinds of physical stuff. Mm-hmm. I have six cats, right? And a wife, so they all need to be entertained. Right. So I feel, I feel semi androgen deficient. I feel 80% of where I should be, but mm-hmm. on paper, I look, I look perfect. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm not sure if it's the reference of having like super physiological levels for so many mm-hmm. years or because I put so much demand on my body, but even sure. I consider myself a very healthy 40 year old yeah. and even with normal levels, I don't feel normal anymore. Right. And it's not, exactly. it's not dopamine. It's not serotonin. It's not GABA. Yeah. It's not n- neuromodulation because I'm on top of that. I, right. Uh, I, I'm releasing yeah, a very, squared ex- there. I'm squared away there. Tr- uh, trust mm-hmm. me. Um, so, it's funny that it also works for a lot of guys who've never taken steroids. They might have like 600, 700, 800 nanograms per deciliter, but nothing is happening happening at the androgen receptor site. Isn't that interesting? And we can take, yeah. yeah, and we could take androgen receptor sensitivity or androgen uh, insensitivity mm-hmm. syndrome as an example. Yes. These guys have 1,200, 1,400, yeah. 1,600 yeah. nanograms per deciliter, mm-hmm. and they look like your average Italian man, you know, tall and a little bit skinny, mm-hmm. a little bit of a beard, mm-hmm. you know? Good looking dude, but n- n- no muscle. Right. And they go to the gym, nothing happens. Nothing happens. Libido, yeah. Libido's okay. SHBG is a cruel <laughs> joke of nature. It's like 80 <laughs> or 100 yeah, yeah, <laughs> animals yeah. per liter, right? Yeah. Because it's binding yeah. up all of this androgens because mm-hmm. it, it's just not getting to the androgen receptor. And on Precisely. paper, you would never think that it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you know, zinc supplementation and selenium supplementation mm-hmm. and carnitine supplementation aside, mm-hmm. Most of these guys never get out of that thing because the genetic polymorphism on the androgen receptors, their GAC repeaters are just non-existent. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're, yeah. I know you mentioned in that deep dive that there's like an ideal range of GAC repeaters. Can you go a little bit in depth yeah. on that sense? And so it's highly variable, you know, somewhere between mm-hmm. like eight and uh, like 30, you know, it, 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 and there's some ethnic differences that are sort of subtle and whether they mm-hmm. make a difference or not, it's, it's kind of hard to say. But, you know, most men fall in that, like, 18 to 20 range. And mm-hmm. it's hard to say, like, what, you know, obviously, the less that you have, the more tightly bound or the more, um, yeah, I guess the higher okay, affinity uh, the receptor is. So so I guess, you know, if, if you had to pick one, you want to be less. The problem is there is an association with, uh, like, prostate cancer, prostate, prostate hyperplasia with these very short ah. keg repeats. So there may be an issue there uh, that probably needs to be teased out. There's so much stuff about the prostate that we don't know. Oh yeah. Well, and I would you know defer to to urology experts on some of that stuff. But generally, those shorter CAG repeats, it sounds good, but you may end up trading off, you know, for a higher risk of prostate cancer or maybe some other issues down the road. And then obviously, you know, you mentioned the problems on the other side of that. If you have these very long CAG repeats, yeah, they're just not going to bind androgen very well at all. So there's a right. sweet spot there somewhere in the middle. And, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot that goes into it, too. I mean, it's just, um, you know, if you're doing everything perfectly in terms of diet and lifestyle and, and you know, and again, all the other factors that I mentioned, it's it's not just the binding of the androgen to the receptor, it's oh, getting it, <laughs> translocating it, all that yeah. stuff. You know, you could have a polymorphism in, in something there that completely screws the whole thing up. And, and yeah, or, or the, 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 you have the other right. So yeah, w- once it gets to the DNA, it starts transcribing mm-hmm. DNA, right, and turns into yeah. RNA, right, the Correct. ribonucleic yeah. acid. Right. And then the ribonucleic acid attaches to a machine. I don't. I'm not even sure what it's called. But then starts pumping out proteins, right? Mm-hmm. Because it's literally mm-hmm. a one-on-one. You have the mm-hmm. segments of RNA convert yeah. into proteins, and that yeah. starts folding, and now you have an yeah. aromatized inhibitor. 
or you have a sex hormone binding globulin, right? Or you have an androgen yeah. receptor. So this is mm-hmm. on a very easy expl- <laughs> explanation. Mm-hmm. This is kind of how it works. But if any step or any step of this process is, you know, not optimal, then it's a problem. Then, yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah. yeah. And, and it could be yeah. something that's genetically wired in you or more than likely something environmental that's interfering with that process. No. Um, again, I, you know, I'm really, I think this whole phenomenon with endocrine disrupting compounds and, you know, industrial chemicals, I think it's, it is, it's, we're going to find out that that is probably going to be the root cause of so many of these issues yeah. in addition mm-hmm. to the lifestyle stuff that you mentioned, but because, you know, we already know that it interferes with the androgen receptor and, you know, mm-hmm. how many other processes and, and how many other places along the, all those complex steps are these chemicals interfering you know, with, with the ultimate end product or the end result. Uh, I think we're going to be discovering over the next few years that it, those things are major players, major, major players. Yeah. It's just, we don't know yet. It's still being worked out.